Shopkeeper have just got the Android Pie update and a bunch of new features that come along with it. So I'll be going through the new features as well as reviewing my experience with Android Pie in the couple of days that I've had it. Now Android Pie has been around since August of last year so it's not exactly the speediest update but I have to commend Nokia for actually even bothering to push out this update considering the fact that this phone is coming on two years old and it's a budget phone and doing so before a lot of flagships from established brands. But enough about that, let's get into the update. And right away you can tell that the changes are somewhat significant. Starting at the top, you have the clock now on the left, with everything else still remaining on the right side of the status bar, with a gap in between to accommodate the notch. But we don't have that on this phone, so the gap is slightly skewed to the left. And the arrangement of icons is also different. Like for example, now the hotspot icon shows up on the right and doesn't show up in your notification shape at all, which is a good thing and that space can be used for other notifications. And speaking of notifications, the notification shape itself has got a revamp. Now, based, based on what theme you choose for your smartphone, whether light or dark, the quick settings icons are now with a dark or light background. And everything appears in a card-based view. Google seems to be enjoying cards, so you know, we have those now. And when you have more than one notification pending, you just get a little dot to show you that you have more than one notification, but not the actual number, so the status bar is less cluttered. I don't really like this, but you do have notification dots to tell you which apps exactly have notifications pending, although they won't tell you how many notifications from each app are pending. Exploring the notification shade further, you now have to swipe down twice to get to the settings quick launch shortcut. And if like me, you use VPNs a lot, the VPN message in the notification shade will push down the settings icon to the edge of the screen, making it almost completely useless which is a bit of a bummer. Now this might be an aspect ratio issue, but still that's no excuse as this particular update is tailored for this particular phone. And when you do click the settings icon, you're welcome with a lot more color. Every settings option now has its own color in the icon. And while that's nice, it's not all. Digging deeper, you get a lot more. Of course, you get a lot of the Android P features like adaptive brightness and battery. You get updates to the sound settings. Now when you adjust your volume, predominantly it will adjust the media volume. You get a small icon above the volume bar, which allows you to toggle between vibrate, ring and silent. Which is good because you don't want to be adjusting the wrong thing every time. That was always annoying. There's new ambient display updates whereby you can now lift the phone just to get a quick glance of the time, maybe the notifications that you have pending, the date, your, your battery percentage. Overall, the always on display is much more useful with this update. Obviously, it's not always on because this is an LCD display and that would be detrimental to the battery. There's new animations when you're opening an app, when you receive a message when you pull down the notification shape, when you pull out the app drawer, and when you're multitasking, which is one of the biggest changes in the update. Now you scroll through your open apps horizontally, much like you do in iOS. In fact, you can tell that they try to emulate iOS with a lot of the changes made here. I personally don't mind that, some people do, but just that there's a lot of swiping now involved. The camera also got some minor updates. Now it's not a feature of a phone that I normally use a lot, mainly because the pictures and whatever comes out of it is pretty underwhelming. And whenever I record I use the Gcam app instead of the native you know, camera app. But these features might have just changed that. In fact, this video is being recorded using the native app on the phone. The autofocus seems less finicky than before. It's not always trying to focus on your face over and over again. And for whatever reason, the picture seems to be more stabilized when I hold the phone up and move it around. The background seems to be more stable. I'm, I don't have the smoothest hands, but I do notice that difference. There's also beauty mode. I hadn't noticed that mainly because I barely ever touched this app. Maybe it was there before, I, I'm not really sure. And I'm not really a fan. There's also a sad attempt at animojis with, with filters and the whole thing is just a big mess. I don't know why these companies keep on trying to push that. Why can't we get real innovations other than stupid gimmicks? 
and now the slow-mo has been improved if you can call it that it now records a slightly higher fps i'm not sure if it's exactly 100 or 120 fps but to use it you really need a well-lit back scene to get any good quality because the picture quality for the slow-mo is drastically low i think what's happening here is that they're sacrificing resolution for frame frame rate in the old camera app it seems that they were shooting slow-mo at maybe 60 fps a lot less smoother but the quality drop wasn't that big it was still fairly usable now though i think you know i might not even touch it at all now you also get a ui that looks like a lot like what you get with the iphone camera app which isn't the worst thing in the world it's a lot more intuitive than it was before i might really find myself using this camera a lot more overall the update experience is nice but it's not all rosy there's quite a few features missing from the stock android p the one that you'd get directly from google or maybe if you had a google pixel this one feels a bit leaner like for example i couldn't find anywhere the digital well-being feature that google advertised so much but the do not disturb feature has been enhanced you can now fine-tune your settings to pretty much whatever you want a lot of the missing features have to do with the fact that this phone was made before 18 by 9 aspect ratio phones became popular and I also have physical navigation buttons instead of software ones. And then there's the elephant in the room, the battery. There's been quite a few complaints from users about the battery draining faster than it was draining before they updated their phones. Now, I personally use VPN a lot, pretty much all the time, as well as the mobile hotspot. Both these functions do chew up quite a bit of battery, but I have noticed a significant drop in standby time. So when the phone is idling and both the VPN and hotspot are off, my battery does tend to drain a bit faster. So I did some digging about this particular problem and it turns out it's not just a Nokia problem. It seems to be an Android P problem. Phones like the Samsung S9, even Google's own Pixel 2 have suffered from this issue. It's an issue that has been around since Android P was in beta earlier on last year. The problem seems to stem from the new adaptive brightness feature. Of course, a lot more research is needed, so I'll be, I'll be doing that and updating you in a later video about my findings. But for the meantime, I found a few, a few solutions that, that could get your battery life back up to somewhere around where it used to be before you updated your phone. So first of all, turn off adaptive brightness. Um, I did this and this alone, and I can say my battery life has returned to pretty much where it was just by turning that alone. Um, this might not work for you, and maybe if you want a bit more battery, you could turn off the ambient display feature you can turn that off and then maybe have battery saver mode on a lot of the time and finally make sure that all your apps are updated that also can help because there's a lot of changes that google made behind the scenes where developers had to implement these changes in android p if they didn't do that then their apps could be using up a lot more battery for the longest time we've wanted updates on our phones and now that we're getting them, we're also getting the problems that come along with that. Those being like the bugs that we're getting, for example, the battery drainage issue, and maybe a few other issues that will come along. Now, Android updates have come a long way from what they were a couple of years ago, and they still have a long way to go before we're anywhere near Apple's efficiency when it comes to updating their phones. Now, that might never happen because of the way Android updates work. There's too many moving parts, there's too many different companies involved, and that just bogs down the entire process. Unless Google buys Qualcomm, or maybe tries to adapt what Microsoft does with the Microsoft updates. They're not perfect, but they are speedy. We'll still be facing these issues and having to wait months on end before we get updates, if at all we get them. Anyways, that's it from me for this video. I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.